and welcome to this episode of BBTV. It's an honour to be giving you a talk. My name's Ollie, uh, Ollie Barrett, and uh, if we haven't met before, then it's a pleasure to connect today. Uh, my theme today is building a better network, and I say that with some trepidation because I know that the very word networking can strike fear into the hearts of many people. So who am I? Well, first and foremost, I'm a serial co-founder. What does that mean? I love starting things. So that could be companies, campaigns, uh, charitable organizations. For example, uh, turn on the subtitles, TOTS for short, is all about literacy, helping kids to read. Did you know if you turn on subtitles on kids telly, you more than double the chances of them becoming a proficient reader, who knew? So our TOTS campaign is on a mission to persuade the BBC and Sky and Netflix and Amazon to switch the default on subtitles. So they're on by default, not off. And uh, mum and dad or the kids can turn them back off if they want. And we're getting there. We've had some amazing success uh, with that campaign already. I've never started anything on my own TOTS. I started with the brilliant Henry Warren and Nina Hale. Um, I also started Tenor, which is uh, now the UK's largest schools enterprise challenge. We've given over half a million kids 10 pounds and a month to see what they can turn it into, to use their imaginations. And uh, really my love in life, if I'm honest, is connecting with people. So Like Minds is an organization I've known and loved over many years. I've been fortunate to host with the team down in Bristol, down in Exeter. And I'm sorry, we can't be in person today. And I know we will be very soon. Uh, as well as being a serial co-founder, I'm a shareholder in a number of different businesses, including Calm.com, uh, a meditation and mindfulness business you might have heard of. Uh, also Troubadour Theatres, creating new live entertainment spaces. And actually, that very first Troubadour Theatre in King's Cross in London came about partly through a connection I managed to make between the team and Google, uh, who gave us permission to build a brand new theatre space on their land in King's Cross. Gave me a thrill because uh, I was forging that initial connection, the chemistry seemed to work, the opportunity was there and I'm proud to be a shareholder today. I'm also a bit of a host, an MC, a compare, and um, you can find me hosting all sorts of events, including uh, the Great British Entrepreneur Awards, uh, some pretty hefty tech events, uh, including for London Tech Week, um, but all, all over um, the world, really. I've had the privilege of meeting people on stage and behind the scenes as well. So our theme today, building a better network, um, I thought I could just share my philosophy, if you like, if you'll humour me, uh, just for a minute or two. I think that, in the words of Theodore Zeldin at Oxford University, life is a search for people. Life is a search for people. What an exciting thought that could be. A search for friends, a search for colleagues, for companions, for fellow adventurers, and collaborators. So I guess my first question is, who are you searching for? And have you found them? What techniques are you using to find them? My second philosophy when it comes to building better networks is a saying by the Persian mystic Rumi. He said, what you seek is seeking you. What you seek is seeking you. And I love that idea. I love the idea that whatever it is you're searching for, is also out there somewhere searching for you. So I like that thought of mutual attraction. I really believe it with all of my heart that whatever it is you're searching for is probably out there looking for you too. So I guess my second question already in this short talk is what are you searching for? Could be in your business, could be in your life, could be in your personal life, who knows? The other thing about networks and networking, and they get a terrible reputation, the word networker, networking uh, sort of chills the blood uh, for many people. But really, I think it's about two things. And I think, let's be honest, if I described you as a networker, you might not take that as a compliment. I don't necessarily. But if I said you were well connected, I think you'd find that uh, quite complimentary. So for me, building a better network is about two things. It's about making stuff happen. 
you know, it's so much easier if you can pick up the phone to someone and they're pleased to hear from you. They feel it's a warm connection. They naturally want to help you. Um, so it's about making things happen. Secondly, though, and for me, this is really, really important. It's about attracting opportunities. How can you magnetize yourself so that when you open your inbox or check your messages, a cool new opportunity has popped into your life? And really, that's what building a better network is all about. So today, I'm just going to share a few techniques, a couple of stories, a few principles about how I think you um, can build a better network right now in 2021. So the first principle, I suppose, when building your networks, and I just say at this point, I think some of these just will be healthy reminders for you. I'm not promising that you'll hear something coming, cutting out of the blue for the first time in your life, but hopefully a couple of reminders. The first principle really is around cultivating your network. Think of your network like a garden that needs loving, that needs watering. And what does that really boil down to? It boils down to keeping in touch. If you call someone up and you need a little bit of help from them, a little bit of advice, you really don't want it to be that first time in 12 or 18 months that someone's heard from you. So the real challenge of building better networks is really cultivation. It's keeping in touch. New people coming into our network, but our wider network, what Mark Granovetta called our weak ties, also feeling loved. And that's why the second principle I just thought I'd put down this morning really is around helpfulness. Helpfulness, and how can you be helpful to your network? Well, I'm gonna come to that. First of all though, what are some genuinely practical ways that you might keep in touch? Well, here are a few I use. Number one, how about sharing a piece of information with somebody? I saw this and I thought of you next time you read an interesting article, an interesting newspaper, uh, newspaper piece. How about inviting someone along to something? I'm going to this virtual event. Would you like to come? We're going to see this show. Can I offer you a ticket? What about helping them in a separate way, maybe spotting something they've been doing? And that links to this second principle very, very strongly of helpfulness, because the secret is helpful individuals get helped. So really for me, the first and second principles around cultivation and helpfulness are absolutely key to better networks. The third thing is be a connector. Now you don't have to spend your whole life making introductions, but really when people think of being a connector, they think of it as making introductions left, right, and center. For me, being a connector is more than that. It's around cross-pollinating ideas. Back to that thought, I saw this and I thought of you. Saying to somebody, not could I introduce you to this person, but did you know this person exists? So very often being a connector is really shining a light on something or someone that the person didn't know existed before. So that's why the third principle is be a connector. The fourth principle is quite a big one, I must concede, and it's seek coincidences. That word serendipity, happy coincidences. For me, social progress, in fact, all progress really, depends on coincidences, two things coinciding. And how you truffle out coincidences, in my experience, is talking about the future. And that means asking better questions, more open questions. Where do you want to go? Who would you like to meet? But also being more open about your own journey, about your own adventure. I'd love to spend some time in Japan over the next months and years. I really want to get to know more about health tech, putting things out there. So that's why that final principle is about seeking coincidences by asking better questions and by talking about your future, where you want to go. So what does this mean in practical terms, building a better network? Well, I've got um, a few things I think you could do this week if you wanted to, that I guarantee will start to show real results. There are things you can do on your own, they're low tech, 
and I really encourage you to do them. The first thing is map your network. It might sound terribly old fashioned, but if you haven't done this, especially if you haven't done it for a while, I really encourage you to do it. Get out a blank sheet of paper, the bigger the better, frankly, a pencil or a pen, and just start putting some names down there. People you know, people you work with, people you collaborate with, people you haven't seen for a while. Start to join those dots and certain things will enter your mind. People you haven't checked in with for a while, people you'd like to collaborate with more, someone you might like to start a new enterprise with, perhaps someone you really should call, someone you see all the time but haven't had a more personal social chat with in a little while. Map your network, one of the most valuable things you can do. I do it almost every week, not my entire network, but corners of it, aspects of it. The second technique, so obvious, particularly as we're speaking in 2021, reconnect. Who are those people that you've missed and haven't spoken to or seen for a long time? And let's be honest, that could be quite a long list this year. Reconnect. Just take a minute or two this week to think about the five or 10 people you'd really like to reconnect with and go for it, reconnect. The next technique, which requires a bit more energy and a bit more organization, host something, become an organizer. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money, doesn't have to take a lot of time, doesn't have to be a huge glamorous event. Suggest meeting up with five or six people for a coffee, for an early evening glass of something refreshing. How about a no agenda Zoom call with eight or 10 people? to find out what's been going on. Become the host. You become known as the helpful connector. In turn, you'll start to attract opportunities. So consider it, particularly if it's not something you've done before. Go for it, become the host. The final technique is something that runs contrary to a very old school of thought, which says you must never cold call. If I think about some of the biggest and most exciting opportunities I've worked on, on Startup Britain with number 10, on TOTS with all of the major broadcasters, on Tenor, on Web Mission, taking organizations all around the world to help them scale their businesses. All of them, bar none, have started with a long shot, a cold email to someone I didn't really know, slightly cheeky in some cases. So my Final encouragement today is send more long shots. People that really you have no right to expect to reply from, but there is a chance because I would put it to you, ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? And when you're sending those long shots, think about this, personalize, not just a generic named greeting, something recent, something that convinces them that this email is for them and only for them. Think of the timing of the email, my most successful long shots have gone out between seven and eight in the morning and between 10 and 12 at night. Think about the timing of your email also in terms of a trigger that might cause you to send it. So I have Google alerts set up and on, on a shameful number of people and organizations, which keep me posted in the back of my mind about what they're doing, google.com slash alerts. But they also alert me to a certain deal they've done, piece they've written, award they've won. And those alerts act as triggers for me to write to them. Think about other aspects. Think about the fact that most of the time with a long shot, the response, the response is nothing. It's not a yes, it's not a no. So don't be afraid to send that long shot email more than once. Some of the biggest breakthroughs I've had in my career have come through sending a note, not once, not twice, often three times. So be persistent as well as patient. So my question is, who will you send your long shot to? Who will you choose to reconnect with in this extraordinary year? And who are you already lucky enough to have in your existing network? And how can you help them? It's been an absolute pleasure connecting with you this morning. Thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you.